Hi, I'm Johnny and you're watching The Hexy Beast. And on today's video, I'm going to be doing my top five digital board games. Anyway, let's get on with the list. Okay, so the first thing I want to mention is that all the games on this list are actually going to be played on my PC through Steam. Um, this is mainly because it's the easiest place for me to capture and it's where I do most of my gaming apart from on the tabletop. So anyway, shall we just get into some honourable mentions? Okay, so the first game in our list of honourable mentions is Armello. Um, one of the reasons this one didn't really make the list is because it's, it doesn't really have a physical counterpart. Um, but I do think it is a great hex based strategy game with nice graphics, great sounds. And it has some really interesting card play and some fun video game style mechanics that would be hard to emulate on the board. Okay, so our next honourable mention is going to be Lord of the Rings, the adventure card game. Um, it's not an exact replica of the LCG, but it does have a lot of that like fantasy flight sort of flair to it. Had a few development troubles and stuff, um, but like I said, there's no physical counterpart, so it hasn't made the list. Um, but it is quite fun to have, and it does have a lot of great voice acting, and it really is a great way to get some of that FFG sort of LCG feel on your computer. So anyway, let's move on to our next honourable mention. Okay, next on the honourable mentions list we have Ascension, which is a deck building game. Um, I find this one of my favourite digital deck building games because of simply just how quick it can play. And also it has a lot of the uh, expansion content, which you can buy very cheaply and add to the game. And it really does enhance the game a lot. It's pretty much a straight replica. Um, it, it's a great game, like I said, but it is it is kind of, it just kind of feels a bit quick and arcadey, so I've decided not to put it on the list this time. Um, if it was a top 10, it would definitely be there. So anyway, let's move on to our first one of the main list. Okay, so number five on my list is the digital version of Gloomhaven. Um, I think it really represents the, the main game quite well, although it doesn't have the main campaign in it yet. It is coming later though, as the game is still in early access. Um, I think the card play is generally really well done. Um, it definitely cuts out a lot of that setup and it has nice graphics and nice sound throughout. It's just a really high production version of the game and it's also a great place to go if you're trying to try the game before you spend a lot of money buying the physical game. Um, like I said, there's definitely a lot to like there. It also has its own little guild master mode, which also really helps to keep things fresh. And that allowing you to have multiple saves is a great way to test out the characters before you decide for when you're playing the main game. So anyway, that was Gloomhaven, and let's move on. Okay, so now on to number four. And this one is the digital version of Aeon's End, which is one of the reasons why Ascension didn't make the list. As this is a deck building game, but unlike most deck building games, instead of shuffling your deck, you just flip it back over. So one of the things I really like about this game is it is a really good version of the, the base game of the physical version. It has every card in there, it's, it pretty much plays the same. Once again, I'm going to say it's another great try before you buy sort of game, um, but I do find myself playing the digital version quite a lot lately. Um, it, it hasn't got much in the way of animations, but that's also a good thing because it means it'll pretty much run on any system. And it's just, like I said, the interface is quite fun. Um, it's one of my favourite deck building games and I, I was really happy to see it on my PC. So let's move on to number three. Okay, so that brings us on to my number three, which is Root. And what can I say, um, from the moment the game boots up, you have this wonderful intro of all, all the animals playing instruments, and I just thought that was a real great touch. Um, it really does do justice to the art of the original physical game. Um, I also think this is a great way to actually learn the game, as it has a, a, a lot of tutorials for each of the factions in the base game. As well as that, as you know, I'm a solo gamer, so I'm really happy that they added the Clockwork expansion quite quickly after release. Um, it's kind of like a, a strategy game where you're just basically... Depending on your faction, it plays very asymmetrically uh, and it sort of like has a sort of war game feel, but it's based around woodland creatures. Um, I highly recommend you check this one out because uh, the digital version of it is turning into one of my favourite games to play on PC. Okay, now we're moving on to number two. And it, it was a real tough shot between this and number one, to be honest, which got this spot. But I decided that my number two digital board game is actually going to be Raiders of the North Sea. Um, that's mainly because I feel it does a really good job of capturing the physical board game experience. It, it's kind of like a worker placement game, but you're putting workers down and you're picking them up at the same time. 
So for every one you put down, you've got to pick one up. And I find this is a, a really good way to uh, do worker placement, especially in a digital setting, because it means turns don't take too long. Um, one of the things I want to mention is that in this game, there is a good amount of support for multiplayer. Um, it also has a cool campaign which sort of changes up the spaces on the board and some of the objectives, as well as having a nice bit of flavour text between missions to sort of keep it moving forward. Um, I Like I said, this is, this is one of my favourite um, digital board games. It really is uh, one of the best out there. Super smooth animations, high production quality. I really can't recommend Raiders of the North Sea enough. So anyway, let's move on to number one. Okay, so we're all wondering what's my number one. But I just have to say, for one, that I've really enjoyed this digital adaption. I think more digital adaptions should do things the way these guys have been doing it. And the game I've chosen as my number one digital board game is Spirit Island. Um, spirit Island is basically some uh, a kind of threat mitigation game where you play the role of a spirit trying to protect yourself from invaders. Um, I feel that this game is actually the most accurate representation I've found so far of the physical counterpart of the board game, which is one of the reasons it's got number one on my list. Um, another one of the reasons it's got number one on my list is just the overall presentation of it. It looks like the board game, it kind of feels like the board game, um, it kind of stops you forgetting rules, it's, it really is a great way to learn the game. Um, it has a lot of spirits in there, everything from the base game is in there. Um, you can tell they're bringing Branch and Claw in soon, um, as well as multiplayer. It's still quite early days yet with it, it doesn't have the full multiplayer yet. But as a solo gamer, being able to play multi-handed without a large table setup is, is a really valuable feature of this game. So for all those reasons above, I have to say that Spirit Island has to be my number one digital board game. Okay, so that was my top five digital board games. Anyway, if you like the look of anything on my shelf or just fancy adding something to your collection, please check out the link to Firestorm Games in my description. Anyway, if you like what you've seen here, please feel free to check out another one of my videos up here and smash that subscribe button up there. Anyway, I've been Johnny, you've been watching The Hexy Beast, and most of all, stay hexy everyone!